it's Christy and welcome to my little studio here in Maui. Today I have something very special for you. The good folks over at Art Possible Ohio, their link is going to be in the description, contacted me a little while ago and told me about this program they have of kind of providing a connection between artists who teach things and their people who want to make and the broader community who wants to learn and make and I said that sounds like an awesome thing. So we chatted a bit and decided that one of the nicest things that I could show you was how to make a little epoxy clay sea turtle. Isn't that sweet? I know, right? So we're going to make this together and we're going to play with epoxy clay to make it. Now, show of hands, how many people have never touched or really felt like they got comfortable with epoxy clay? Yeah, a lot of you. Well, welcome to your new addiction. Epoxy clay is super simple to use. It's very durable. It's wonderful. It's a glue that is also a clay and you just get to stick all kinds of things in it. And what better way to do that than with this little turtle? So I'm going to walk you through all the steps. I'm going to show you what you need to make it. We'll make the creature, talk about it, and then you'll be ready just to continue to make turtles all over the place. Um, if you want, you can go to the description in this um, video and you will be able to get straight over to the Art uh, Possible Ohio folks, see what they're all about, support them in their efforts, and just see what other things they have in store for you. And you can also check this description for little goodies. I have a kit, there's tools, there's other little things that you might want. Okay, kids, buckle up. We're about to make a turtle. Come on. Here's what our finished turtle will look like. Why don't we take a second and figure out all the things we're going to need to make this. Now, I do have a kit available that gives you every single thing that you need. So if you want to grab that kit, it's in the description. You just go to my website, christyfriesen.com, and you can put in the search bar kits, and it should pop right up and take you to the section where kits are, so you'll always be able to find that. But you can gather a lot of this stuff up from various places. So let's take a look. First and foremost, of course, we're going to need our epoxy clay. And I'm a huge fan of epoxy sculpt. That's what I use for this. All of the bits of the turtle are made out of epoxy sculpt. And that is so that we can just press all of these other things in and they just stick in there. All right, so epoxy sculpt you're going to need. I use um, just a pair of disposable gloves and just some spoons to scoop it out and mix it. Um, so, in fact, while we're talking about tools, um, there's other a couple. There are also a couple of other tools that you're going to want to play with. Um, just any old sculpting tool is helpful. If you've got a pair of needle nose tweezers, that can sometimes help you pick up and place things. You can also use any kind of a pickup tool. This is a crystal katana, which I love, but uh, you can use a wax pencil or even a little bit of wax on the tip of a toothpick, that kind of thing. Paintbrush you'll need if you're going to use powder. I'm going to use just a little bit of this is down to the end of it, but um, this kind of a, a nice teal blue powder, and that goes just right here um, underneath some of the glitter that we're using for his wonderful little shiny, sparkly texture for his skin. This is gold, I'm sorry, glass glitter, green glass glitter. Now you can use regular glitter. I recommend the glass glitter just because it sticks into the epoxy clay better and you get a really lovely shine. But if you don't have that, um, you can improvise. Sometimes those little round glass uh, micro beads work really well. Again, regular micro glitter works fine too. Um, that, that's all very good. Then as you can tell, I use just a single pearl for the center right here. Um, and you could use anything. Uh, if you have a fun little shell that you found that you like or a little piece of glass that looks amazing, that's great. I just used a little shell for the center and then some mini tube beads to go around it. Seed beads would work fantastic as well. And then the rest of him is just covered with shell chips. And I've got a whole bunch of these little shell chips that I can use for that. You could also use little shards, like if you had a very thin um, little piece of glass or um, a plate or something like that, you can carefully break it. I suggest that you wear your safety goggles and you put it in a little Ziploc bag and you break it with a hammer and be careful because those little edges are sharp. That's why I like to use the shell chips. 
because we don't have any bleeding involved with shell chips, which is terrific. And then um, finally, the only thing that we um, have to have is some eyeballs for him. I'm just using these little glass uh, doll eyes, um, but you can use a seed bead, you can use a crystal, that sort of thing. Oh, and a little teeny piece of aluminum foil. We're going to use that inside the shell so we use less of the epoxy clay. All right, so gather up all of your goodies and let's begin. So we're going to start by mixing our epoxy clay together. I'm using my disposable gloves and um, I've mixed, well, I've pulled two equal parts. It's a part A and a part B. And I've just kind of pulled some out of each bucket. I've used my little spoons to scoop that out with. And I've tried to make them about two equal parts. It looks like that's a little more than the other. So that's about right, right there. And I'm going to use my fingers now, gloved fingers, to completely mix it. You have about an hour's working time with this particular brand. And again, I'm using Epoxy Sculpt. Um, it's made by Aves, A-V-E-S. You can get it on my website. You can get it through Amazon, and you can get it directly from the source, of course. Um, but I love this stuff. There are other epoxy clays out there. You just use what you can get. But I love this because I have a good hour of sticky time so that I can press all my things in. It's very important to make sure you're using part A and part B, equal amounts, and mixing them thoroughly. It's a chemical reaction, and there's a lot of things like that, resins and plasters and various things that when you mix one part to the other, a chemical reaction begins that ends in it turning into something else, usually a hardened form, and um, that's exactly what this is. So this putty will stay very flexible, and then it won't. It'll be rock solid, which is great. So now I've mixed it completely, and this is just a little silicone mat, um, a nice nonstick surface. You can use a plastic baggie or whatever nonstick surface you've got to work on. Um, but I like this. It's a nice, uh, nice thick mat and very handy. So what I'm going to do is I've got this all mixed up. I'm going to take and put aside um, as I'm working and just bring it as we go along to add the bits and pieces. And we're going to create the kind of whole turtle thing first. And then we're going to start embellishing all the bits and pieces as we go. Um, and I've also got a wet wipe handy because, you know, now I'm going to start working with my fingers and I want to keep making sure that both my tools and my fingertips are nice and clean. Okay, you ready, kids? What we're going to do first is I'm going to take just a little bit, like about this much right here. And I'm going to roll this into a little ball and then roll it just slightly oval and flatten it. This is the bottom shell. You're not really going to see this. See how it is down there? It's kind of out of view. But what it does is it gives me a landing place so that I can add all of my other little features. I can put my foil and my shell on top and all my um, arms and legs and everything else. And you don't, it don't need to make it very big. In fact, now that I look at this, this might be a little bigger than I want. Let's make it a little smaller. And that's the nice thing with working with this stuff. Just eyeball it. I've made it a little smaller, oval again, and flatten it with my fingers. And that should work. If you find the edges of your epoxy clay are cracking a little, that's normal. You can just tap it with your fingers. It should be just fine. It won't affect anything at all. All right, so there, we're cleaned up, washing my fingertips. And we're ready. Um, now I'm going to put the legs and head and tail on before I put the shell on top of that. Because we're going to want to put all these little bits and pieces on those uh, exposed little limbs before we put the shell on so that we're not getting all that glitter and everything all in areas that it doesn't belong. Okay, so now let's make the head and the legs. These are very, very simple shapes. And the head is simply... Um, like a snake, a little teardrop like this, circle, teardrop. So you've got this kind of long, skinny teardrop, and that's going to become the head, all right? And that's going to just get pressed on right here. This is the beginning. The arms are going to come out like this and the tail at the end. So I'm just going to put this on just like that. Now we're going to make some limbs. They're the same kind of shape. In fact, what you can do is you can make two balls of the same size first so you can kind of make sure that your limbs are similar before you make them it's the easiest way to keep everything looking symmetrical and then i'm going to roll those into an oval and bend it a little bit and press now that one got a little split so i'll just pull that together and press 
And what I'm looking for is just sort of like a, a little bean shape, you know, just a little rounded, flippery shape. On sea turtles, which is what we're making, the front flippers are big. They're doing all the movement. They're, they're the power. And then the back legs are about a third or half that size. And they're just steerage. So um, that's just going to be a small little bit we'll need for back there. So we're doing great with the amount of clay mixed up. All right, so I'm just touching and pressing until I get a shape that I like. And then I'm going to look at it and see if they look, you know, about the same size. Does it look symmetrical? Does this turtle look happy? I'm going to may may maybe make his uh, nose a little bit less bulbous and a little bit more rounded. What do you think? So far, so good. I think that flipper's just a little bit bigger than the other. So I'm going to press that one a little wider. All right, looking great. Let's put those back legs on now. So we're going to start with little balls, about half or less the size of those front ones. And we're going to do three because the two back legs and the tail are all about the same size. So you see how easy this is. Um, it's just very simple. And you should have enough, plenty enough left for the shell because it's going to just be kind of a covering on our foil. So there's our three. And we're going to turn this into a fat teardrop. Let's do the two little legs first and flatten that out. So then they stick out back here. So these come up like this. He's on the beginning of his strokes. And these stick in the back to kind of be the rudder and make sure he's going in a straight line or whatever he wants to do. And then finally, let's make that tail. And we can make it just a little longer and stick that in the tail zone. All right. So now you've got a nice little flattened um no no top shell turtle shape. I'm thinking this is looking pretty good. So now what we're going to do is we're going to get our eyeballs in there and then add all of our little glitter bits. Does that sound good to you? All right. Now, if when you made this, if it didn't go just quite so smoothly on your first go round, don't stress it. I've made about 627,000 turtles, so I know the shapes and it's pretty easy for me to do them. But sometimes it's like, oh, that's too big. Oh, that's too small. Oh, gosh. And it may take you two or three times to get it right. If you want to practice the shape and you have some polymer clay around, you could practice that shape with polymer clay and get the feel of it before you then switch to your epoxy clay. But this is what we should have now ready to put the eyes in. Okay, so like I mentioned, I have got just these little glass eyes and they're on a little bit of a wire stem. And sometimes that wire stem is a little too long. So let's take my, my wire cutters, which you don't have to do this. I didn't put this in the tools because you may be using just a glass bead or a stone bead or glass crystal or whatever. Um, but if you've got one of these things on a wire, which I love, you can trim that down so it's not so unwieldy. And I'm gonna just take this and press it. In fact, let me use my tweezers so I have a little better grip. Uh, needle nose tweezers come in very handy for all this stuff. And let's just put it right on the side there. Okay. And I'm just going to place it. I'm not going to push it all the way in yet. That way I can adjust and change it if I have to before I commit to that eye placement. Okay. So once you get them in where you think that's going to look good, and you see I've got them on the side. They're not up on the top. Then you can kind of press towards each other press towards each other. And you see, I keep flattening that out so I don't get this too long and skinny. And that should work. All right. There we go. Look at our little guy. Now, if you want his head to lift up, all right, you can take your um, non-stick surface like this silicone and cut a little piece out to tuck up underneath him or use a little bit of uh, anything non-stick like straw, plastic straw, things like that. Um, you don't want to use you know, foil or something like that, because that's going to stick onto it. But it should be good just like that. All right, so now let's add the glass glitter. I always do this first before I put the powder. So you can see this has got a bunch of little glass glitter, but then I've got some color around it to give some color to his skin. And the reason why I do that is if I put the powder on first, it's actually going to kind of block the surface of the epoxy clay from grabbing onto that glitter, and I'm not going to get a really great connection and therefore like dandruff my turtle shall be shedding his little skin flakes everywhere which is awkward so now i'm going to just get my finger moist with my wet wipe and dip it in to my glass glitter so you can see what i've got here and i'm just pressing this on the outside edges 
of his skin bits. And I don't go all the way in, although you certainly could go farther in. It's not going to hurt anything. But I just want to make sure that those, you know, toe tips and flipper tips have a nice coverage. And I'm pushing it in, too, because I really want to make sure that grabs in there. So if I just gently, lightly put it on the top, it's not going to get a really good grab and it's not going to be firmly attached um, once it's all dried out. So we want to be careful about that. So I'm going to put some on the head as well. And just go careful so you don't squash everything. But that should be plenty. All right, what do you think? I think that looks pretty good. So now if you can, you can lift this up and just dump as much of it as will get off. And then anything that bothers you, you can take your brush and scooch it out of the way. Get ready for our powders, all right? So let's clean up around our, our edges. That way we can see if anything is lacking and go from there. Okay, the area is all cleaned off. And I'm looking now and wanting to make sure that my eyeballs don't have any glitter on them. So let's clean that up a little bit better. So now we're gonna go to our powder. This is an optional step, as you can see, um, the turtle is just fine as it is. If you got the kit, you'll notice you got a little teeny vial of some powder. You can just tap a little bit onto your tile. I'm working, by the way, on a tile. You don't have to do that. As long as you have a non-stick surface between you and your work surface, you're fine. And as I mentioned, this can be a silicone mat, like a baking mat. It can be a Teflon sheet. It can be just a piece of baggie, a Ziploc baggie, anything like that. Um, but I think this is good as it is, but I'm going to get some of this powder and I am going to just put it right over the top of all that glass glitter. Now, once this is dry, because epoxy clay is an air dry thing, and it will take about 24 hours to completely cure to this nice hardened stage. And when that's done, you can gently take a little um, wet wipe or even your finger or something and brush away any of the powder that is still on top of the glass glitter, which will give it, you know, more shine and that'll let everything kind of sparkle all on its own if you wish. But I'm just kind of dabbing a little bit more of this powder onto the surface of the clay. And you notice that I'm kind of tapping it on. I am not like doing a lot of brushing because number one, that's going to take off a lot of that glass glitter. And number two, it's not really going to get that powder any better onto the surface of the clay. So this is almost like a pouncing. Um, you're just going to kind of go on top with a little pouncy, bouncing uh, kind of motion and press that on there. Now, as you notice, that kind of goes on top of the eyeballs as well. So I'm going to take my wet wipe, and you can do this when it's all done, but for the purposes of our, our seeing our turtle properly, I'm going to just take off that powder on the glass. It won't stay there, so it's fine, but we want to see our little dude. So what do you think? I think we're looking pretty good. We have a little bit of residual um, glass glitter, so we may want to get it out of the way uh, before we put anything else on. But I think we're really good to go. We've got a nice little uh, look on our turtle. And like I said, at the very end, if I want to tip this up a little bit and tuck something underneath so that his head is lifted, uh, we'll be able to do that. So be careful about smashing the head down too firmly because we might want to lift that up at the end. All right? All right, on to the next bit. All right, so I've got a little piece of foil here, and I want to make like a little wad that the rest of my epoxy clay can go over to form this nice rounded shell. So I'm going to take this, and I'm going to try and crunch it into a shell shape. So don't just wad it up in a ball. Um, that'll be okay. But if you take your time and kind of press it into the shape you want, as you go, it's going to be a little bit easier to manipulate than some blob that maybe is too tall or too round or too whatever. So see how I'm kind of pressing this into a hamburger bun? Um, well, it's not really a hamburger bun because it's kind of oval, but that's kind of the shape that I'm looking for. Oh, okay, that's looking pretty good. And then if we want to get it a little bit smaller, which I do, I'm pressing the edges here to kind of compact it a little bit. All right, again, it may take you a couple go rounds to get the shape that you want. Don't stress it. There's nothing in the world that says you have to be perfect the first time you do it. So take whatever time you need to make it be just what you want. And don't worry. Part of this is learning and having fun. So if this doesn't work out great the first time, it'll work out great the second time. Now, do you have to use the foil? 
Now, you can totally make a big old blob of this and just press it on. I like it though, because then I don't have to use quite so much epoxy clay, but that's just me. You may have a whole nother thing. So what I'm gonna do is now roll this up and I'm gonna press it out. And what I'm wanting to do is sort of making a nice flat pancake that I'm gonna cover that foil with, okay? So I'm just pressing, pressing, pressing. Gonna take my foil, which is the right size now. So see kind of how my coverage is there? And I'm gonna just bring this around and cover it up. That also eliminates any weird cracked edges. And because I'm pulling it over like this, that's gonna give enough clay to connect onto the underneath clay. Um, that's giving me a chance to press all over with my fingers and get rid of all kinds of funky weirdness. And if you want to moisten your fingertips a little, uh, just a little, not a lot of water, but just a moistness, that will help you smooth away any ridiculous crackage that we don't want. So there we're going, how about that? That's looking pretty good, huh? And um, how much should you cover this? Um, whatever, as long as there's a little coming over the edge so that that edge of the shell doesn't have any foil sticking out, I'm totally great with that. All right, so now before you commit to it, kind of place it and look, how is this going? If it's too small and his armpits and everything are hanging out, that's no good. If it's too big and it just looks like he got crushed by a meteor, also not so great. So um, if it's like this, where it looks like he is carrying his shell like turtles do, then you're good. And just adjust accordingly until you got it. And now press it all on. I'm just kind of pushing just enough for the clay to clay connection to grab. Perfect. Now, this is a non-stick surface, but while you're working, this epoxy clay is gonna grab it tight. So you can't just like lift it up and move things around. It's really tricky once it gets on its plastic or uh, silicone backing to move it around. So just know that um, it's just, it's there. It's gonna be stuck on. Once it's completely dry though, you'll just peel it right off and it'll be perfect. Ruby? Okay, let's move on to the next bit. So we have our wonderful focal bit, in this case, a nice little pearl that I'm just gonna put right in what I'm hoping is the center. So you look at it from all sides to see if you're good, and I'm pressing it in. My pearl had a little bit of flatness on the bottom, which I find to be a nice way of doing that so that you can um, have it rounded on there, but you're not seeing the holes on the side. If yours, you can see the holes on the side, then that's okay. It's not a big, big deal. All right, so actually, let me put my beads over on this side. And I'm gonna use my pickup tool to um, just pick these up and place them in a line around the pearl. Why? I don't know, I just like it. And to me, whenever you're working with epoxy clay in this mosaic assemblage style, um, the basic rule of thumb is, does it look good? Are you amused? And if you can say yes to both of those, then you are doing it correctly. Since this is just a putty that dries and then it's a rock hard thing, there isn't any rules other than that. If you mix it proportionately properly and then let it dry, anything else you do to it is gonna be just groovy fine. So I'm gonna move this a little bit so I have room for that last little one there. Sometimes they don't always go in exactly right, but I think we got it. So what do you think? Doesn't that look good? It kind of um, showcases that little pearl at the top. And if you want, you know, you can put a second layer all the way around it. That's up to you. Um, I'm gonna, cause why not? Seems like a fun thing to do. Plus I like these little tube beads. If you do not have little glass tube beads and you know, if you got the kit, they're, they're in the kit, these little green ones or uh, whatever. And um, you can use like little flat back crystals. You can use any kind of seed bead. Like let's say you went to the thrift store and there was a whole bunch of little necklaces made out of seed beads, right? And it was $3. Like, oh, I can handle that. I hate the necklace, it's gross, but look at all those seed beads in there. So then you can just cut the necklace apart and you've got all of these lovely little beads that now you can use for your mosaics. Fun, right? So you never again have to cry if some cherished piece of jewelry breaks because now it's just more ingredients for your next mosaic piece. Same thing with beautiful little um, glasses or mugs that are made out of 
of ceramic. If they drop, you know, you've got a little chi a wonderful piece of china and you drop it, it's, it's okay because now it's just ingredients. So that helps, I think, our life be more happy. Okay, so look what we've got so far. Doesn't that look cool? I like it. So the last thing we're going to do now is fill up the rest of the shell with shell bits. And I'm putting them all here on the side because I've noticed that the beads and the shells tend to really kind of grab on my silicone. So when I'm trying to pick them up and place them, sometimes they just stick on there too much and it's annoying. So uh, I kind of uh, leave them off to the side on that tile. That seems to do pretty good. So what you're wanting to do is you're just wanting to create like a jigsaw puzzle using all the little things that you have. And I suggest that another reason why we've got it on here, as you can tell, is I can now move this around since I'm not able to move it around um, on the silicone, but I can move the silicone around on my tile. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first go through all this pile because I've got some big ones and some small ones. And you could even take a hammer and crunch down some of the small ones if they're just too big. I mean, the big ones, if they're just not small enough, um, whatever you need to do. But I'm going to go around the shell with some, some pieces first and just kind of make sure that all around the, the center of the shell, it looks good. And it's kind of like just doing a puzzle. You're just going to piece things in there and make sure they look nice. And you see what I've done is I place it in and then I press it down with my finger. Um, and boy, get creative about what you use. Like shell pieces are terrific, but what else could you use? You know, there's so many other little nifty bits and pieces of things that you could use. You could just keep on going with all these tube beads or seed beads. You can use pieces of costume jewelry. You know, they've got all kinds of little bits of rhinestones and stuff like that. Since this is an air drying thing, anything you can shove in there is just going to dry and then be firmly connected to that shell. So you can see those are all just in there. So boy, uh, you might have to make a whole crop of turtles with different little things on each one and just see which one you have the most fun doing. Um, Cause why not? Right. Uh, I can see a whole garden full of these. Like you could take a little dish put some sand in it and put a few of them all kind of frolicking about. Isn't that groovy? All right. So now I'm just going to keep on going and fill up the rest of the shell with all of my little pieces, just like a puzzle. You're just trying to find how things fit together. So you can see here, I've just kind of found pieces that fit and you can go all the way down to the bottom or like this one, I kind of stopped on some of those. Uh, some I went all the way down as long as it looks good from all angles. So you're going to want to kind of spin it around and look at a bunch of different angles to make sure um, it looks nice. And I would say too, you want to try and get as many of these pieces as close as they can without overlapping. That's my opinion. So that all the little black in between kind of makes a little grid work. Um, in traditional ceramics, uh, sorry, in traditional mosaics, you would often cement everything in and then put a grout. And a grout is like a a liquid cement, kind of a sandy cement stuff. And you put it all over the surface so it gets down in all the cracks and crevices and then you wipe it off. That was a way of like filling all the cracks because oftentimes ceramics or originally were um, like uh, floors, tile, tile work that people are going to walk on. So you don't want a whole bunch of unevenness all over the place. So the grout would fill in those gaps. But this is purely decorative. So we don't got to do that. We're using the black of the epoxy clay. And I just chose black because I, I like how it looks with all these other things that we're adding to it. Um, but we're using the black of the epoxy clay visually to kind of do the same function as traditionally a grout would do. And that is just to make the spaces in between look awesome. All right. So um, as long as as you're putting things in, you like the way it looks, you're piecing it together like a puzzle and you like how it's all turning out, then you're doing it correctly. All right, this is a funky shape. Let's see if I can find a spot for this. I like this. These, of course, are shell bits, so they were originally parts of shells, which means you get odd angles and funky bits and curled and curvy things. If you um, if you have an ocean nearby or even a lakeside, um, we'll sometimes have shells. Um, but if you've got a place where you can go gather your own shells, um, you can use them just as tiny little small shells, or you can put them inside of a bag 
and take a hammer to them and make your own little shell chips. Uh, that can work really nicely too. I live in Maui and um, we go, my, my brother and I, I live here with my brother. He's been on island for a long time and I decided, hey, can I live in Maui too? Do you got a spare bedroom for me? Which he did. Hooray. And um, so I'm here for a while and we go out snorkeling and he'll dive down deeper than I do. He's got better capacity for that. Uh, but he'll often find the oyster shells that the octopuses are finished with. Um, and the starfish, there's a couple different things that eat them. Um, but they kind of pull them apart and eat all the oysters. And then they're just kind of littered around on the floor of the ocean. By the time they get cast up by the waves, they're usually pretty scuffed up and scratchy. But if you get them right after um, somebody's been nibbling on them, oh my gosh, are they just shiny and beautiful. So I have a nice little selection of natural oyster shells that I can smash apart and use for this very thing. So that's kind of exciting. And I'm sure you will find um, similar th similar things. Maybe somebody knows um, a rest somebody that has a restaurant that sell serves oysters and they'll have leftover oyster shells. So you could go ask them for that. Um, who knows? Get creative. There's always so many ways to find bits and pieces. Um, you can obviously buy things, but there's a lot of ways to just forage for what we use on our creativity. All right, so I've been chatting and making, and I think as we turn around, we can kind of see that we've got that whole shell pretty much covered up. And you do want to kind of spin it around and see if there's any empty spots. I'm seeing one little spot here that could use another little bit. And I think you've noticed too that I will place the piece and then I will press it a little more firmly, um, usually with the other end of my tool or with another tool. You want to make sure that there's a good, strong grip and connection between the things that you're placing and the epoxy clay. Okay, so let's give his little face um, a upturn. As you can see, this guy's head comes up, which makes him look a little bit more alert and active. You do not have to do that. He is adorable just as is. He's very determinedly getting to the ocean in that viewpoint. Um, but this, what I'd like to do here is we can kind of lift a little bit here. And luckily, because of some of that powder, this is coming up. And I just trimmed a little bit off of my edge because it's a work, a thing that I can work with. So I don't have to be all precious with it. Um, and I'm just going to tuck that up underneath his chin. And that'll hold his head nice and up high. And he's looking all around. And I'll check on it to make sure that doesn't get too crazy. But I think that gives him a really fun look. And then they can chat. Say, hey, guy. How's it going? It's going great. But I'm a little bit uh, drying out still. So don't touch me. Okay, I won't. And there you go. All right, so now what do we do with it? We let it dry 24 hours. Epoxy clay, once you have put the two halves together and they begin to mix you are now committed to this piece becoming a hardened, finished thing. You can't go, oh, wait, I'm going to Europe, I'll be back, and then hope that it's nice and soft when you get back. It will not be. So once you get started, like I said, you've got that about an hour of work time. Give or take, depending on how cool it is or hot it is, the hotter your environment is, the, the less work time you have. Um, but you, once you get started, you're done. Now, you may decide, I only have a little bit of time. I'm going to make just enough so that I can do the body of the turtle, and that's it. And then I'll come back later, and I'll make the little foil and the shell thing, and I'll do that at another time. That's a really good way, like especially if you're first starting, you may not want to commit to doing the whole thing all at once because you're worried about your time. Just do that body and everything goes well there. Great. Come back and make some more epoxy mix and start in from there. Okay, so how cool is that, right? Don't you just want to make a million of them? Ta-da! There you go. How fun was that? and how easy. I hope you really got a feel for this material and any fears that you might have had um, are completely alleviated because now you're like, oh, well, that was super easy, right? Uh, there are so many ways that you can make variety on this. You can add crystals and all the other things we talked about while we were making it. So why don't you experiment a little? See um, what you can do with this concept and make it all your own. And if you have another crafty friend, of course, you might want to share how you made this with them so they can get all turtly too. All right, kids. Again, don't forget to go wander over to the Art Ohio Facebook page, which is in the description. Check out what they've got going on and support them in their good works. Happy creating. I'll see you at the studio next time. Bye.